All right, what's up, gamers? Today, my name is Ram. What's my name next time? We don't know yet. Um, I just uh, got this three minutes ago. It's the, the Nurgle part of the uh, Runes of Decay, like in-depth uh, blog post. We're going to read it, we're going to reflect on it, and uh, take it from there. Go to World Warhammer 3, Runes of Decay. Mercana, let me zoom in. Alright, greetings. Decay is rolling through the known world of Warhammer 3. And three new legendary lords have emerged to push ingenuity and conflict into a new dawn. Alongside a suit of new units, lords, heroes, campaign mechanics and more. Thrones of Decay, our latest paid expansion, will be arriving to Total Warhammer 3 alongside update 5.0. As promised, you'll know exactly what's coming in front of Decay before you buy before you see a buy now button. So let's unearth our latest arrivals, those of invention, of amethyst, and of pestilence. Alright, oh, yeah, because I was because I was wondering, you uh when you go to the Steam shop. Let's see. Okay, if I go to Steam here. And here, here we have Malachi, right? And if you go to uh, like here. And yeah, I have to keep down and vote it at one point. All right, so now they're showing here. Uh, before, only Elspeth show was shown here for me. Uh, Tamarkan and Malachi had like manually searched for. Yeah, we're still missing the like um, the bundle deal. Where we can buy all three straight away. It's going to be one euro slash one dollar cheaper buying them uh, separ separately. Yeah, let's continue. Check out the announcement trailer before. Uh, we did that the uh, last time. If you haven't seen me reacting to this video, uh, you can go and check that right after this one or right now before we continue this one. This week, we're delving into the first legendary lore to arrive in Thrones of Decay. I'll scroll. Uh, one of Nurgle's greatest champions, the infested master of hosts and bringer of desolation, the maggot lord himself, Tamar Khan. As the stuff of lion legend, tales of the savage commander trace back for a millennia. So it's best we set the record straight and it meet the infested warlord of the ages. Uh, let's see, if I do this, yeah, there we go. Better. It's kind of bothering me seeing the um, taskbar. Summer count, the maggot lord. All right, he is really big. Should be. He kind of looks like an ogre, uh, more or less. Tamarkan is rumored to be many things, a monstrous warlord, an arrogant commander with Nurgle's favor, a hideous mutant giant corpse maggot. Rumors aside, one thing is certain, an army is gathering in his name, and even the Elector Counts themselves will have the result pushed to its breaking point when it arrives. Yeah, the thing about Tamar Khan is he is, uh, he is a maggot. Uh, it is a maggot, like, inside a, a corpse, basically. Let's see here. Mm, I see Chaos Warriors of Nurgle. By the way, if you didn't know, Shosen... Chosen of Nurgle are the strongest infantry versus infantry unit in just uh, straight up uh, bashing each other. I had a little tournament where I put all the elite infantry against each other. Uh, they even whipped the floor with uh, corn Chosen very easily. Here's the Plague Ogrins. More Plague Ogrins. Some... I don't remember what these uh, Pestigors are called with the Nurgle. I think it's Pestigors. At a glance, here's what Tamar Khan brings to the table. Tank. Combined the ability of an ogre, of an ogre infested with a coarse maggot of Nurgle, makes this legendary lord tough to kill. Hard hitter, wielding an axe with great bullish strength, this unit is especially hard with high armor piercing damage. Unfortunately, we got an unfortunate angle on the. Let's look at it. Bu. I hate this name. Bu. Bu Bolos. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Bu Bolos. Tamarkan can be mounted atop the unique Toe Dragon Bubalos for aid in combat and traversal. Tamarkan's Chieftains, a unique, unique, <clears throat> a unique, a unique campaign mechanic, focusing on recruiting the strongest warriors around and earning their fealty to achieve ultimate victory. As a true reveler in death and decay, Tamarkan, the corpse maggot, once burrowed into the flesh of other mortals to become their puppet master, never finding a perfect match until now. Adoring the power that the mass of strength of an ogre body brings him, 
Samarkand grew attached to the only form he commands today, the body of the ogre tyrant, Karaka Break Mountain. Alright, there's a better view of the axe. On the battlefield, Tamarkan has a suit of abilities at his disposal. First up, Feast of the Maggot Lord, a passive ability only triggered upon his death. As a last ditch attempt to cling onto the margins and the margins delivers serious damage to the victim, outright killing those below a certain health of threshold, and granting Tamarkan a second win to get back into the fray. Alright, so when he dies, triggers and think I don't think it's an explosion. It seems to be like a single target. Like the one uh, whoever does the killing blow on him gets this attack hit, and if it kills uh, that thing. And this thing has like an execution feature if they have below a certain health threshold, as it says. And it's an insta kill rather than just damage. And if that kills. No, wait. No, he doesn't have to kill. And granting. Yeah. So he revives. So, first time he dies, he does like, let's say, a magic bolt on whoever dealt the killing blow on him that can execute them. And he. Revise, basically. With how much health, we don't know yet. Uh, with Nurgle's favored son, this is uh, another ability. This active ability grants him melee defense and increased ward save, and the Rotting Host passive ability increases the weapon strength and leadership of those within 35 meters of Tamar Khan, the latter of which can be decreased even further with an Ogre Kingdom classic, Arsbelcher. Ogre Kingdom Classic, Arsbelcher. Is that an ability Ogres have? Like, I played Ogres a couple of times, but I cannot remember Arsbelcher. Oh well, let's continue. For those that still dare to face the Maggot Lord, it's Black Cleaver active item. Oh, so you play League of Legends. We'll ensure they regret it, granting magic attacks, which isn't always a good thing. Significantly increases armor piercing damage and a boost to base weapon damage for all allies within. Alright, pretty cool stuff here. So he has um, he has a second life basically that uh, drops a high damage uh, single target spell, from how I understand it. Then he has uh, an activatable ability like um, Killing Blow or whatever it's called. You know, stuff like that, hold the line. I guess this is like most comparable to. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what I can compare it to, but it's like. It's a buff for himself that makes him tankier. Uh, that's what Favorite Sun does. He gains melee defense and more war save. And then he has the Rotting Host, which is a passive ability. But this is an aura. Within 35 meters. Which increases weapon strength and leadership. Pretty good stuff to uh, decrease, especially for a Nurgle faction that's already very grindy, and now you're even sturdier. And his final thing is uh, Black Cleaver, which is probably his legendary weapon that has an activation. So when you get the Black Cleaver, you can activate it, which will grant magic attack, armor piercing damage, and base weapon damage for all allies with range. If you wonder what base weapon damage is good for, Basically, this is what uh, all modifiers applies on. So this is stronger if you have more buffs than if this would have been just like a weapon damage buff in itself. <clears throat> uh, this is probably a flat amount. No, it's pr now it's probably a percentage. All right, so this could make um, like low damage units, like say Marauders, could probably push them up more than it uh, does uh, uh, Chosen's. But Chosen's are still going to be better. I mean, just your number-wise, but if you have... If you're on a budget, so to speak, it will have more impact on your weaker units in their melee performance. 
No, no, let's check his chieftains. Samarkand chieftains. This is uh, the guy from the trailer. I remember that ugly face. And that's the dog he was sitting on. I don't know the name of uh, this dog thing yet. Let's see here. Uh, so he can get uh, this guy. Geisk the Befouled. To be considered befouled is by even the variant horse of Nurgle is a disgustingly impressive feat indeed. Let's see, trait, campaign movement for own army. Alright, so these are our heroes then. Uh, yes, it should be. Uh, let's see, he has Icon of Decay plus 15 charge bonus and Wasting Sickness passability. We don't know what that one does. Chieftain Fealty, increase the field of Kais the Befoul by doing the following actions. Create Plagues, defeat Warriors of Chaos, Corn, Slanes, Siege, or Norskan Battle. Alright, oh, that's a pretty easy stuff because normally you're surrounded by Chaos stuff anyway. That's probably why he's the first one you can get. Let's see. Alright, so this is like reputation stuff. The more you do with his fealty stuff, like the stronger bonuses you get, so... Uh, Purchased units are recruited from Chieftain. Oh, okay. So, oh, I thought these were his mounts. No, 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 no. These are units you can recruit if you have him with you. Okay. Recruiting Kais the Befoul will earn these rewards. Unlock Shares of Nurgle. Unlocks uh, Unique Talisman and Trait for Kaisk. Alright, these are these two, I guess. Uh, aligned. Attaining this fealty level will earn these rewards. Unlock Chieftain ability. Uh, chieftain abilities. Activate Chieftain abilities to gain powerful bonuses. Enable attrition for enemy armies in case current army's province. Alright, I like these uh, attrition abilities. And at committed, we get Chieftain ability number two. Choose. Chance of plague spreading plus 20%. All armies. Very nice. Unlocks Toe Dragon, which is this guy. This one, Rot Knight, which I assume is these guys and uh, dogs. Uh, devoted. Completing case battle. Oh, they get a quest battle at the end. Cool. We'll earn these rewards. Share, plus one Chariot. ST plus one Rot Knight plus one Toe Dragon. Alright, nothing special here. Just more caps. Get more caps. Is fine by me. Let's see here. Let's have a quick glance at what we get. So we get this guy, kind of unique. Then we have a uh, looks like a Nurgle sorceress because I think this is a staff. Could be an axe. So either a sorceress or uh, <coughs> just a chaos dude, a chaos Nurgle dude. A femir. Uh, this looks like the shaman version. I think this is a staff here. A werewolf. But they're not called werewolf, they're called uh, skin wolves or whatever. Ray Shaman and a Chaos Dwarf. If you're wondering why there's a Chaos Dwarf here, that's because uh, Tamarkan did bring Chaos Dwarfs with him uh, to a non to deal with Empire Cannons. So he coerced uh, some Chaos Dwarfs to help him with uh, their cannons. Fortunately, if you read the story, you already know that the Empire Cannons are actually defeated the Chaos Dwarves artillery. So yeah, it makes sense why he has a Chaos Dwarf guy here. Because it's a reference to his uh, story, where he's from. <clears throat> Alright, let's 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 read about uh, the field thing now, or the chieftains. With the body of Karaka Break Mountain as his own, Tamarkan's knowledge is matched only by his strength. And he will use both to gather the strongest warriors the world has ever seen and adopt them into his own twisted army, absorbing the many strength of those that could not defeat him. Tamarkan can gain the fealty of many chieftains from various cultures of the Warhammer world and unify them under a single banner. His banners. Using his two key resources, dominance and fealty, Tamarkan can decide how to best... No. He can decide how best to manage his acquired chieftains. Dominance, the main resource, is gained from winning battles. This must be spent to acquire chieftains, activate their abilities, and add their units to his own recruitment pool. The fealty of a chieftain is increased by taking action that said chieftain approves of. However, uh, no, whether it be raiding settlements, erasing cities to the ground, or wiping various opposing forces off the map. For example, if Tamarkan seeks a devoted chieftain from the Chaos Wars, it best express the same hatred for the Skaven as they do. 
When their field increases, Tamarkan can reap the benefits in his favor. Units and special abilities culminating in a mighty thematic quest battle in his path to gaining boundless loyalty from these great warriors. It's only a matter of time. Heisk the Befouled. Makes me think of uh, Predators. Mouthing the eyes, kinda. Legendary hero Kaisk the Befouled, Ergen Champion of Nurgle, serves as a living memory of what Nurgle's blessings can do to a soul. This mighty Chaos Champion gave everything to Nurgle, losing his voice to Nurgle's rot, sacrificing his form so that he could stand alongside Tamar Khan as a mass of corrupted flesh in service of the Lord of Decay. Being one of the first to join Tamarkan's banner, Kaisk swept through the Chaos Waste as his chief lieutenant, commanding his own infested gang of horsemen with the Rot Knights, who we will be meeting shortly. In battle, Kaisk is a tank. His health regenerates in combat, and thanks to his corrupt flesh ability, he is granted an increased ward save when above a certain health threshold, making him harder to fell. Always mounted atop a Rot Beast, or as I said, that's the name of the, uh, the dogs they're fighting. Kaisk has access to the Befouled Charge, a passive that triggers when charging, of course granting himself and nearby allies increased speed and increased charge bonus, stripping the enemy of their charge defense versus large attributes. Alright, that's a pretty good thing to remove the charge defense versus large. Plus, with his Sword of Felt item, Kaisk can spread decay to those he strikes, afflicting them with decreased melee defense and armor. Spread the curse in his name. Chaos Lord of Nurgle. Yeah, so this is... Um... No, wait. Uh, this is... Uh, not, this is new. I think they're showing another unit now. This is not uh, about the chieftains. But we're gonna talk about all the chieftains. I think they're only showing the unique one, so to speak. Having earned the great favor of the Lord of Decay, the Chaos Lord of Nurgle stands as a gener generic Lord of the Chaos God. Looks to be a melee, uh, melee version, not a sword. A sword setter. With skills only held by the very best of Chaos Warriors that leave nothing but rot in their wake. With a sword, shield, and a var variety of mounts at their disposal, the Chaos Lord of Nurgle leads as a durable and beefy warrior with an increased health pool. As a debilitating unit, this lord inflicts poison damage and fear upon the enemy, while buffing nearby troops by spreading leadership and melee damage reflection bonuses to them with rot or die. Alright, so this is, uh, this is trading out, uh, what's it called? Fight or die, I think it's called? Yeah, they're changing that one to rot or die. But who could forget the weapon he seeks? The Father of Blades, the rumored to be the first sword ever fought. Alright, all right, so this is a chieftain then, because they're talking about like a unique weapon here. It's an active augment that the Chaos Lord of Nurgle can acquire to increase his armor piercing damage and reduce the melee attack of nearby foes. Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle. Mm, a bit skinnier, but uh, he got a unique look it looks like. Cool mask. A powerful spellcaster is capable of harnessing the raw winds of magic. Have found... Oh wait. Uh, da, 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 da. Active Augment. The Father of Blaze. Maybe this isn't... Um, this might not be an item. This is like a passability you get in the talent trees. Oh, yeah, I will figure that out when I play the game. Powerful spellcasters capable of harnessing the raw winds of magic have found themselves at home with the Lord of Decay's troops as the Chaos Sorcerers of Nurgle. A new generic hero. With access to both the Lore of Nurgle and the Lore of Death, and like the many units of Nurgle before them, his debilitating casters boast poison attacks and the fear attribute. They also serve the armies of Nurgle as healers, with access to various means of regeneration to their allies, making them vital assets on the field. Alright, one thing important here to notice is that uh, <clears throat> all these units here are obviously not tied to only one faction, so other this is not only Tamar Khan is going to have the access to these. So your Wars of Chaos, uh, if you're playing Wars of Chaos and you have um, Tamar Khan part of the DLC, you can use these guys in your units. Like, let's say you play, um, what's his name again? Kolek, Kolek Sun Eater. Let's say you play him and you want your uh, Shago stacks, but you want a healer for them, right? 
then you just put in one of these guys and they can keep uh, healing the Shagos. Which will make them last a lot longer. You don't need to like spend a turn healing up after a very rough battle. Vestigors. These guys. Probably the thing I care about the least amount, if I'm going to be honest. Blastens birth by Nurgle. The Pestigors of Disease and Pestilence serve their god with the trademark vigor of their fellow beastkin. Alongside with the infested, oozing, bloated skin from the Mark of Nurgle. In the heat of battle, as well as debilitating their foes, Pestigors firm with their own durable skin and muscle. Supporting a high health pool for an infantry unit, with their weapon of choice a two-handed great axe, the Pestigors are masters of smashing through armor, piercing it with a single strike. It's pondered that most high esteemed Pestigors are blessed with a mutation, the Tears of Nurgle. This passive Shane Hex may only be triggered once, activating when within range of an enemy unit, resulting in infectious se secretions from the very orifice that slow the opposition down before spreading through their ranks. This makes them a prime candidate for Vanguard deployment, not their in intrinsic trait of the Pestigors. They don't follow their pack, they lead it. Let's see here. So they have a passive called Tears of Nurgle. I don't know what they mean with Shane Hex. I know what a Hex is. This is that means just that it's a debuff. What does it mean that it's a Shane? It can only be triggered once, activating when within a range of an enemy unit. Does that mean it activates by itself then? I assume so because it's a passive. Which will spread through their ranks. I don't know if this is just fluff text or if it means it can, like, as chain, so to speak, to different units. Let's say there's uh, four spearmen units. You come to ca contact with one of them. Uh, the, other, the other three spearmen units are kind of close enough for the X to bounce to them. I assume that's how it is. And then they get less movement speed. Alright. We don't care too much. I like Nurgle is slow. It's a slow faction. Might change with uh, the Rot Knights. We'll see. Plague Ogres. Alright. Let's see here. Perhaps taking inspiration from the visage of their commander, Tamar Khan, the Plague Ogres are twisted amalgamations of once ordinary ogre, with both body and mind contorted by the blessings of Nurgle. Joining Tamar Khan in his pursuit of the Empire, Plague Ogres are the brutish humanoids that fell in battle at his hands before accepting the Lord of Decay's power. In return for their lives, they grew fat with infestation and disease. Serving Nurgle as sluggish yet durable infantry, the Plague Ogres seek out large enemies with either their giant blades or great axes to slice them to ribbons. Let's see. Large... Yeah, no, giant blades or great axes. I think it's the same. I think it's just different weapons in the same unit. I think it's like two different types. I think it's just the variations in the units. They're built for punishment. Rot Knights. This is probably the most interesting one. Uh, the new things. Uh, Rot Knights are one of the select few Chaos Knights blessed with the mark of Nurgle and the power to ride Rot Beasts into battle. Although the Chaos Armor they wear has grown rusty with time, the Rot Knights, the Rot Knights a new monster's cavalry unit for Nurgle, can still take a beating, sacrificing some of their speed for thicker skin with increased health, defense, and regen. The goal of a Rot Knight is to lock down large targets on the battlefield and shred their health thanks to their giant claws and one-handed lance, delivering potent anti-large attack. Question is, can they beat Demigriffs? They don't have to, but... Uh... Can they beat Demigriffs with Halberds? Plus they have Regen. I assume they're gonna have Poison, because all Nurgle units have Poison, basically. And those two things are very big things to beat in a one-on-one -on -one clash. This little uh, Crab Claw, it looks like. Oh no, that might, that, this might be a part of the shield. That's just the color here on this thing. Alright, moving on. Um, with, re with region, the Rot Knights have a weakness to fly, but can regain their health over time and enjoy increases to their melee defense when in the heat of battle. 
Vile Trolls. All right. I was wondering because we didn't see this in the trailer. We didn't see the Vile Trolls in the trailer. So I was wondering if we weren't going to get them. Very cool. Under the shadows of the Chaos Wastes, Nurgle sets sight on these trolls, infecting their flesh and burrowing deep into their guts, gifting them with a blessing that should consume them. What remained was bulbous monstrosity, vile troll, endlessly eating itself alive from the inside out, only to regenerate and devour itself once more. This blessing is a boon to the inherent passive regen in combat, taking our shrug of wounds as they strip their own damaged skin and replaces it anew. With poison attacks on their side, the bile trolls can strike fear in any foe they approach and can pierce straight through their armor with their one-handed blade. With all that infestation going on beneath the surface, the bile troll can expel it with the corrosive bile hex, softening the armor and flesh of their opponents and plummeting their victim's melee defense for an easy kill. Share their curse at your own risk. I'm definitely gonna give these guys a try. Alright, and now for the big centerpiece unit, the Toad Dragon. Here's a, here's a normal one, and here's the mounted version that Damarkan sits on. I wonder if this is going to be like uh, the Jabberslith. It's like it has super strong uh, attack animations. The true horror of Nurgle doesn't just lie within the bellies of the rotten soldiers, but also within the reptilian nightmare that often dwells in the northern wastes of the known world. The Toad Dragon, a rare sighted monster for Nurgle, brings a tough, no, brings a thoughtless level of hunger and violence to anything that crosses its path, melting flesh with its breath or squashing victims flat with its weight. With the help of its cruel anatomy, the Toad Dragon swipes through armor with its thick claws, lashes out at targets with its, pro with its proboscis tongue, snatching them for their hiding place and reeling them into an gaping maw. Those, however, are the lucky ones. This large hulking creature specializes in smashing through even the most compact of formations and holds its place within Nurgle as the largest, most expensive unit to date. Ooh. With heavy missile resistance, that better not be like 20%, that better be more than that. The Toad Dragon borders on unkillable, but it's what lies within that truly makes it something to be feared. With its active ability, unspeakable foulness, Toad Dragon spews forth a blast of flesh rotting horror, delivering explosive damage and inflicting poisonous burns on its victim as their skin slips off its sheet and their organs turn to liquid. Alright, so it can burp out the fireball, telling me that uh, has a damage over time effect. K is but the least of the worries. Yeah, this unit is definitely going to be cool to play. Let's see, Nurgle Legacy Updates. Before we wrap this up, before we wrap up this grim tale of Tamar Khan and all things Nurgle, we wanted to address something that's important to both us and you, our players. We've taken lots of your feedback from our prior DLC regarding legacy race updates and we're committed to making the rejuvenation of those races core mechanics a key element with the release of Thrones of Decay. With that in mind, here's what we cooked up to enhance Nurgle as a whole for the Grandfather's Lords, both present a future. Alright, uh, let me do some... Uh, like a wish list. Alright, so first things first, uh, better plagues. There's a lot of plague effects that are useless that you never pick because there are a few of them that's just way better than all the other ones. Just uh, some just has too little impact, especially when you play on higher difficulties where the AI gets like massive stat bonuses and infrastructure bonuses, all that shit, you know. So more effective plague effects, even if we have to like work for it, like we need to upgrade the plagues, you know, kind of deal. Uh, let's see, uh, something about the rotation. I hate the rotation system. Uh, you get so little money. Uh, yeah, I, I despise the rotation system. I understand like the flavor and it's like, oh, it's cool because no other faction does the rotation thing. But the rotation thing is just garbage. It's annoying because it affects uh, your economy. <clears throat> like sometimes you earn a little bit more and then 
another turn you're you're in less because your economy building rotated back to tier one, and now you're negative economy, so now you can't rec <clears throat> so now you can't spend up your gold so to speak because then you will take attrition damage until next turn. Blah blah blah. It's just annoying to deal with, and it's not like fun or interesting. Uh, those are probably my two main things. Uh, you might not have been here, but uh, when the game came out, you wanted to play Kugav in the Realms of Chaos, I think it's called. Realms of Chaos campaign. My god, that sucked ass. You could, not, you could barely leave your starting area. If you wanted to play through that, you just had to like camp your base for when the portal's coming up. Because you couldn't push anywhere. Because uh, the AI would just like surge you. And you can barely build anything because you don't have any fucking economy as Nurgle. <sighs> Let's see. Plagues. Plagues have been completely reworked from the ground up. Com impacting Kugaf, the Plague Father, Festus, and Tamarkan. Here's a sneak peek of the new plague system. Oh, yeah, by the way, Festus was super easy to play. But uh, he's a warrior of chaos. He's not that demon of Nurgle faction. They didn't have to suffer the fucking rotation buildings. Let's see, 25% chance to spread, lasts for 3 turns, 5 turns immunity. Alright, so if something is affected, it can't be affected again for 5 turns. Alright. Oh, and there's a little video. Alright, so it picks 3 effects. Oh, this kinda... You think of uh, Dead by Daylight, it's fucking... Like, take uh, talent points or whatever. Alright, so let's see here. No, start over. So first we take Plague... Uh, plague effects on Nurgle armies. Replenishment plus 10%. Plague effect on non Nurgle armies. All units suffer attrition. Alright, so that's the go to. That's the, that's the starter. Uh, my question is how do we unlock. I guess. I guess you unlock these as you like progress the story, and then you can click one which you start with, and then you like follow a link. So you can't like mix and match exactly how you want because. He clicks that one, he gets to choose uh, the ones connected to it. So he takes uh, this one. Which gain Vanguard deployment for all units. Yes, please. Oh, that's a, that's fantastic. And minus 15% speed for non nurgle armies. Then we wrap it up with the fleshy abundance. Oh, battle healing cap minus 50%. Get fucked, vampire counts. Not only Vampire counts, but Tomb Kings too. Tomb Kings is probably slightly more annoying because it triggers three times. And we get Fleshy Abundance, which is uh, the Nurgle healing spell. Alright. Yeah, this is, uh, this is way better. So Let's see. Infect, Summon Cultist. You need 200 Plague to uh, do it. You could at least wait at a turn so you could click the Summon Cultist button. Let's see here. I, don't know, I think this is a new resource. This is probably a Tamar Khan thing. Uh, the Dominance resource, I guess. What is the issue with the current system? The problem with the original system of plagues is that it was completely solvable. As a player, there was an objectively strongest route to take and no need to deviate from it to maximize the benefits and minimize the drawbacks. This took away from Nurgle's fantasy experiment with disgusting new diseases that we want players to feel. You're all right, you only picked the best effects, and then you skipped the rest. Now you're kind of forced to, you really want this bonus? Well, then you gotta work with the other bonus that are connected to. But yeah, you're still probably, you're still, you're still gonna be like a cookie cutter plague, depending on purpose. Like this one they made here it seems pretty up, it seems like, like a pretty solid one. You get healing, you get more like uh, replenishment after battles, anger deployment, you can just surge the enemy. But yeah, it depends on the effect. Like yeah, here we have campaign movement, which is probably nice. This looks like um, raiding slash sacking bonus. Armor is probably never going to be picked if you can avoid it. Melee defense, melee attack, plague thing, cooldown thing. This, this might be uh, for... Um, uh, I was trying to remember the word for it, but like for your buildings, like infrastructure, it's an infrastructure buff, like the growth here. Like these three here could be like some kind of infrastructure bonus going for these three. Some kind of ammo buff. 
another replenishment thing. Bunnies, winds of magic, building time reduction. All right. So what are we changing? Plague symptoms now exist within a web. Certain symptoms connected to each other. You can combine three of them to create a plague. The UX has been redesigned to better showcase how this plague will affect both Nurgle and non-Nurgle faction. Positive for Nurgle, negative for everyone else. All right, I have one question. What about enemy Nurgle factions? Do they get, do they get the bonus as well? Does they specifically say Nurgle and non-Nurgle? If you spread, let's say you're fighting another Nurgle faction and you have a disease and you spread it to them, do they also get Vanguard deployment, uh, fleshy abundance, etc.? Well, uh, the symptoms location within the plague web will shift every free place. Oh, all right, that's fun. That uh, definitely that shakes things up a bit, get some variety. So your first plague may allow for a connection between symptoms granting casualty replenishment, growth, and recruitment health. Oh, recruitment health, that's probably what uh, this thing is. Oh yeah, I forgot that was a Nurgle thing. You recruit units, they don't start at full health, but you get them like instantly. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, but on the next cycle, those symptoms could be nowhere near each other, and you'll have to conjure new plagues from what's available to you. As a result, special combinations have been removed. Alright, I like that. We're introducing a new type of symptom, blessed symptom. These are assigned randomly and change with every plague cycle and as a new symptom, while blessed, has its effect doubled. Alright, fun. Plagues can now be mutated with increased effects, increasing the spread chance, extending duration and much more. That's uh, the thing here in the corner. This is uh, its own thing. If you get like a really juicy one, <clears throat> a really juicy combination, you might want to like invest some extra plague points to make it last longer, etc. We're introducing a new type of sim... No, 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 no. Plagues now have immunity period, so those on the receiving end of being plagued aren't constantly under its effect and have a time of respite between bouts. It's pronounced respite. Kulgath Plague Father benefits greatly from the system. He is uniquely able to have many blessed symptoms active at once, allowing him to conjure much more fearsome diseases than his peers and decimate the world with unholy infectious combination. Helman Gorst is going to wish it's set up shop elsewhere. Uh, this is referencing to uh, the Immortal campaign because these two are like next to each other and they normally fight each other right off, uh, right away. Cyclical buildings. Yeah, this is the other thing that I said I hated. What is the issue with the current system? Nurgle's unique cyclical buildings has led to some unique and thematic gameplay strategies. They have not. When it comes to recruitment, but we felt it had a negative impact on their economy. Yes, that's what I said, and defensive capabilities. What are we changing? Military buildings are still cyclical, but all remaining buildings are now static, like the other factions in the game. Military buildings now cost infections instead of treasury. Military buildings now cost infections instead of treasury. To help with managing the choice between improving infrastructure and recruiting. Mm, do I like that or not? I don't know. I think I'm neutral about it. Like in the late game, sure, it's great, but uh, that's normally when we don't care about it. Because in the late game, you just have like Gorillion uh, infect points. We have done an economy pass in the buildings following this change to help with Nurgle's difficult financial situation. Yeah, with how bad Nurgle is, you, it's not that. Oh, you can use Nurglings. It's you have to use Nurglings because you can barely afford, uh, like, having twelve plague bringers, uh, some supporting monsters to them. No, you gotta use Nurglings because you have barely any fucking money. Because uh, you gotta spend that on. Uh, because you gotta like raise shit, be aggressive with a faction that's meant to be fucking slow. Let's see. Uh, allowing players to choose a treasury building rather than having their economy gain split between all chains. Oh yeah, that's how it was. All buildings gave a little bit of money. But then they wrote, and then they like went for cycles, and then when you get back on cycle one, they made a lot less money than when we were, were in the third or fourth cycle, etc. Resource buildings haven't had an effect overhaul. Cult buildings have undergone an effect path. All right, that's good. Cult buildings is this? No, no, no. Resource buildings is what I'm thinking of. 
good because you basic uh, resource bidding is basically just oh now you can recruit another cultist. Whoop whoop. So yeah, it would be nice if we could get some cash out of the resource buildings. The remaining cycle of buildings can now be rushed by spending infections. All right, that's fine. More means to spend resources you get is always good in my book. Recruitment. What's the issue with the current recruitment system? Nurgle's unique recruitment system is too punishing for the benefit of instant recruitment. What are we changing? Recruitment costs and recruitment health are not tied to the Nurgle corruption level of the province that the military force is recruiting in. 30% health at zero corruption. 60% health and minus 50% recruitment cost at 100 corruption. And with the addition of rushing construction, cyclical building should help with filling up recruitment pools in early game. Technology tree. What are the issues with the current system? Nurgle's technology tree is lacking a clear direction. It was designed too heavily around Kuga's realm of chaos experience. What are we changing? Nurgle's technology tree is now split into two distinct groups. One focus on military and the other on campaign faction bonuses. The layout has been reworked to make it clearer and easier to progress through the technology tree. Alright, well, there's no picture of it, so I'll just take the word for it for now. Army abilities. What are the issues with the current system? Previously, Nurgle gained our army ability points based on the amount of damage taken. We thought that this didn't reward Nurgle players enough and seemed like a consolation prize for losing units. What are we changing? Nurgle now gains passive income of... No. Nurgle now gains a passive income of army ability points for every enemy hit in the battle map. It's currently being affected by negative effect or debuff. This plays into Nurgle's playstyle sparing debuffs and contact effects, making them even more desirable for both campaign and battles. Alright, good. Aggressive, uh, rewarding aggressive play should be the way. We're confident that these changes are going to enhance the Nurgle experience for everyone who plays them. Whether you are scorching the lands with the deceased as Kugav, harvesting souls for Nurgle as Festus, or gathering an army of chieftains as Tamar Khan. And just maybe, there's one more legendary Lord of Nurgle waiting in the wings, ready to be unleashed in update 5.1. Uh, that's Epidemius for those wondering. But for now, I reckon we have catalogued enough plagues to keep Grandfather Nurgle himself happy. So let's see what we go got coming up next. Yeah, Epidemius is a um, free legendary Lord we're getting in 5.1. So you don't need to buy any DLC, you'll just you'll get to play him for free. Up next, for more details on Tamar Khan the Maggot Lord, and to see this infested commander in action, keep an eye on our official channels for our first Thrones of Decay showcase. We'll be back next week with a look at the Empire's latest, Elspeth von Draken, before tackling the Dwarves Malachi Makaison the week after that. Which I said in the trailer reaction video, that's what they were gonna do. And wrapping up our reveals for the following week by delving into some free additional content coming in 5.1, including the fated Nemesis Crown and a legendary Lord. Nemesis Crown. Oh, I remember. There's something I vaguely remember. Long, long time ago, they brought this thing. I think it's another item, like Sword of Cain, like a really strong item that's up for grabs for anyone that can get their hands on it. Please let us know how you are feeling about this one, and head to the Total War Discord and see a community to make your voice heard in all things Total War. And as always, you expect a full suit of patch notes of update 5.1 the day prior to launch. See you on the battlefield, and remember to like Tramilton's video and subscribe to him if you want to see more content as he talks and reacts about things. The Total War Team. Alright, this was very nice news. We like this, we're happy about this. We appreciate the changes CR Dunning after the Clown Fest that was Shadow of Change and all the milking that came with that. I appreciate this. I know that people are gonna want demand more out of this saying, oh it's still worse deals than what we got in Warhammer 1 and 2, blah blah blah. But uh, I'll take this. I definitely, I'll definitely take this over um, what we got from Shadow Change. Shadow Change did get, did, did get good after the um, Update where they added like fifty percent more stuff. But yeah, this one this one felt very thought out. Uh, Tamar Khan, by the looks of it. Of course, um, that my my opinion might change when I actually get to experience it myself and play it. 
which I will do, and I will stream it. And uh, hopefully you guys will be there and watch me play it and talk to me about all things Total War. But with that, I want to thank you all for watching. And until next time, bye-bye. Uh,